It's been quiet around here. September was wild. After I had a convention, I got sick for a week and then my kid got sick for a week, but I'm happy to be back. So welcome officially back to Fortuna Femenina podcast, where we talk about money, mindset, and marketing. The overall goal is to bring women together on the podcast or virtually wherever you're watching so we can grow our business together. Today is the first of the month, and I just had a call with my girls talking all about self-accountability. Cannot wait. I hope that you enjoyed today as officially my first day back after a month off. Let me know what else you want to hear. Let's talk about something that nobody likes to talk about and a word that might not be super popular and sexy, which is accountability. Maybe because being accountable really means that you have to check in with yourself and correct yourself, but not only with your personal life. In this case, we're talking about our business and professional life, but also our emotional life romantic life, parenthood life, all of that. And we have to bring our ego down and be humble in order to take ability for our own faults. It takes a lot of courage to be able to change and be better. I would say it's one of the hardest parts when it comes to business and any business, any personal life. Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat when you have a chance what you think when you hear the word accountability. Because let's face it, there are so many people who may not be open to being accountable, but it's also our society. Our culture is totally fine with the blame game. If it's not our parents' fault, when we grow up, they did this to us, they did that to us, they lacked this. It's our ex's fault or it's my coach's fault. It's my principal's fault, my boss's fault, my husband's fault, my country. My politics, my president, my church's fault. It's everybody else's fault. And it's easy to play that blame game. What did you say? I do have to tell you this one thing. And if you can just take this one thing out of this, it's that you are not responsible for what someone else does to you. You're not responsible when you were a child, when you were younger and all of that. But now as an adult, okay, now as an adult, you are responsible for how you react to it and you are responsible to heal yourself and you are responsible on healing so you can make sure that you react differently and being accountable to that. There's not a healing class, but it all comes together because when you start taking personal accountability, you can then take business accountability, relationship accountability, you leading others and you are going to make mistakes. So you're going to be able to take accountability for that. This is a lesson that I learned, I would say, January. My freaking eyes opened, finally. It's crazy that it took me this long to learn it, but you have to release the things that you cannot change. You cannot fix what somebody else broke. Like, you just need to be accountable to you. Having enough courage to looking at yourself in the eye and be like, okay, dude, this is not my story. I am okay with this happened to me or this is how I'm acting, we're going to change that. And you have the power to change it. Not many of you might have been here when I talked a lot about my breakup. I used to talk a lot about it like when I first got married, but it's so not relevant to me anymore because I just don't feel like it's part of my story. And I'm going to share it with you again, just so you understand where I'm coming from. When I was 21, I had a breakup. It was really bad. And when I say it was really bad, I just let it completely take over my entire life. Not only did I start drinking out of this and I, you know, well, you might not know, but I got a DUI from it. I lost a lot of relationships. I started getting a lot of trauma. And honestly, a lot of the drinking came from the stress, the stress that I had. I was supposed to get married. I paid for a lot of the wedding myself. It took me a really long time that every single problem that I had for three, four, five years after that, I was blaming him. Okay, dude, five years, relax. Imagine if I would have just took self-accountability. Who told me to start drinking? Who told me to just blame everything that bad happened on him? Who told me to go continue going out and going clubbing and hanging out with mutual friends? That wasn't helping me heal. Do you understand that? I hope that this example kind of opens your eyes to maybe something that you're going through because sometimes we put ourselves in these situations and never healing from something, aka me, I was never healed from this personal situation. 
triggered every time there was high stress, I would be like, okay, shots time. And up uh, being a nightmare, okay? <laughs> that goes back to self-accountability. I did make a decision to cut it, not completely, you know, I still have a drink or so, but not using that as an excuse for high stress things. Total side note, I'm a plant mom now and I channel my energy over there. You have to also take into account the type of people that you're hanging out with. And my mom always used to say this to me and I'm like, I roll emoji, like, why are you still talking to me about my friends? The people that you hang out with are going to make or break the way that you run your business. The type of people that I keep close to now that I had this eye-opening moment is completely different than last year. And it's, yes, it's a personal thing, but it has affected me into my business because I don't really even have alcohol in my business events. I just see the productivity around it and all of that stuff goes back to self-accountability. I, I read this quote. Her name is Sophia Nelson. And she said, denial is only a delay of the inevitable. Let me read that again. Denial is only a delay of the inevitable. And that resonated with me because I knew that I had a problem. I had to fix it and I was just in denial. So let's talk a little bit about what accountability really is. Being accountable for your actions, for your thoughts, your goals, dreams, being responsible and understanding them. Sometimes we just do busy work. And we're just like, okay, I need it. It's first of the month and we're going to do everything. And I have a huge list to do and I have my money sheet. Okay, relax. We need to go over your goals and your dreams. A person that wants to make $100 a month that is just here to hang out, to have fun, that's not going to be the same actions that a person that is trying to supplement their income. $100 a month versus $5,000 a month is not the same action. Yes, you still need to be accountable to your actions, but they're different actions. Think about the people that are really successful, according to you. You're not going to find a person that's successful, according to you, that is making excuses. Doesn't even matter of what. Health, business, personal, marriage. And like I said before, your circle really does matter. So the people that keep you accountable too, that calls you out on your stuff, your friends that are like, dude, and maybe you don't have that yet. So we need to make some changes. I'm not saying dump your husband if he's not keeping you accountable. You really do need people that call you out on your crap. I, you guys know this, I have a few clients that I coach. I have to say, like, you said you were going to send me this and you have it. You said you were going to launch on this. Yesterday, I texted a girl and I said, hey, she took my class. I asked, hey, when are you launching your ebook? She said, ASAP. When I asked, what day on the calendar is that? She said, very soon. And I said, by when? And she's like, thank you for keeping me accountable very soon. Would you say that that's accountability? No, I wouldn't. But it goes back to people don't like accountability because it kind of stings a little. And we just have to take away the emotion around accountability. And self-accountability is even more important. So moving on, I read this on, I don't even have the book here. It's okay. I'll put the book link below this but she's giving an example of this student that she knows that she wants to be a doctor okay so her goal is being a doctor and every single step that she takes from the time that she's in high school up until after college and even doctor school and all will go with her actions and being accountable to that but let's say in the middle of her first year in college she wants to go backpacking in europe who can she be mad at if she doesn't become a doctor well herself it's the same thing with you. It's not any different in our business. You can't say that you want to hit director if you're not taking accountability and taking action around what you need to do. So I feel like we do, going back to the blame game, if you don't have a goal, you can't be accountable to it because you're just going in blindly. There are a few areas where we can really focus on being accountable and let, let, me, let me talk to you about it. Number one, the way that you communicate with others, the way you spend your time. Do you know, have you done that activity? I give it every single year. At the end of the year, I give you that. It's like the end of year business reset and you track your hours. What do you do every single hour? This is not my program that I made up. I got it from, I don't even, I think it was a book that I read or I got on YouTube, something like that. You have to track your hours. Just the way that you track your calories when you're going to send them to your personal trainer when you first started. If you don't, you're a new trainer. <laughs> but you track your what you eat 
That way she can see what are you eating, what's missing, what you should not be eating, and why you're not losing weight. You track that. So how are you spending your time? Your behavior, uh, the way that you respect others, how to show respect to others, the way, which something that I'm working on, which is very personal, is eating habits. I love chips. I love the toxic ones, okay? Um, your exercise routine and your attitude. Why am I giving you personal tips? Well, because this goes into the business ones. You feeling good, you having respect for others and all of that goes into the leadership, the way that you treat your team. What are you responsible for and how can you be accountable to the following? Returning calls. Who hates the phone? Me, 100%. But we are getting better at returning calls and there's no more excuse. I don't like the phone. That's not an excuse anymore, okay? Returning text messages. Also getting better at that. Being on time. Okay, traffic is not an excuse anymore either. This is something 100% calling myself out. I don't even try to use that as an excuse anymore. I'm just like, hey man, I know I'm late. I'm sorry. Because I heard this from Greg Cardone. He was talking about how everything is our fault. It doesn't even matter. He's a little bit extreme, but I like his idea. He's saying that it doesn't even matter where you're going. You need to be an hour, leaving an hour earlier just in case there's an accident, just in case something happens to your tire. Your responsibility is to be there on time. After I heard that, I'm like, okay, I can't use traffic as an excuse because it really isn't. Another thing that you can be responsible for for your business is keeping your car clean. Okay. Again, I know this is not a self improvement class, but when you keep accountable, to yourself, you just show up better. And I was reading this list in the book that I will link below. And that's true. I remember always having my car dirty and I would always be like, I'm so sorry that it's dirty. Like, I don't even want to take anyone. I don't want to give her a ride. I don't want to go to coffee because my space is dirty or your workspace. I don't want to go on a video because it's messy. Let's just keep it clean. Let's not let it be messy. We need to be accountable to our financial goals. Sometimes we're chilling like we got it. We're chilling like we got 10K a day sales and I'm all for manifesting. I understand a lot of people don't like budgets, including myself. Like, oh, I don't budget. I just make more money. Okay, but you're not there yet. If your credit's not there, okay, let's go on a budget. Let's pay off some credit cards, stop spending, career goals, marital goals, all of these things. You can be accountable because we have control over our action and we can learn to be better in any of these areas. But it's your choice. At the end of the day, this is your life. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes, but you have control over how you act. You need to embrace your story. Embrace it. You can build your dream life. Like You can definitely do this. But again, at the end of the day, this is something that you need to do. Be better. Be accountable. And everything that you do in your personal life bleeds into your business. So it's time. It's time to be accountable. If you have not made a plan for the next three months, that's okay. Let's start off with the very first of month, which is today, first of the month. Hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. And I would love to hear a little bit more about what you want to hear about. What do you want to learn? What strategies, marketing questions, all that stuff I want to bring to you. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a video just like this. And I'll see you in the next one.